I'm an awful mom. If he cries when I put him down, he won't love me in the morning. Having a c-section means I'm not tough or that I didn't birth my child into the world in the real way. If my milk supply is low, my baby's gonna end up stupid. Giving my child store-bought baby food will stunt his growth. If my child's small now, there's no way he'll grow up without body insecurities and image issues. If I talk about my struggles too much, people will send Child Protective Services after me. These are just some of the lies that I believed as a first-time mom. I wanted to share this with you guys because I remember that period when I brought my son home and I would never been a mom before. And here's the deal, I had a lot of experience. I was a nanny, you know, I had taken care of newborns, I had friends with kids. I, I love children. I've worked with children for a long time. And yet, having one of your own is like a whole nother level. It's scary, you try your hardest, and more than anything, I wanted my son to live a life that was free from hardship and pain, especially anything that I caused. Now, that put so much pressure on me, and there were all these lies that I grew to believe at the end of my pregnancy into having my son. And here's the deal, I was pretty normal on the mental health spectrum. I'm a therapist, and I'm a neuroscientist, and I was really on alert for postpartum depression. I think I had a little postpartum anxiety, which led to some of these thoughts taking hold in my brain, but I wasn't on medication. I wasn't really struggling as deeply as a lot of my clients are, as a lot of women out there, as maybe you are. But I still believed all the things that I just said. Now, I share that with you guys because I distinctly remember how hard it was and the tears that were streaming down my face thinking about being a lesser than mom. Now some of it I think is performance um, pressure that we put on ourselves as women and as a society. How many women out there do you see sharing their natural birth videos on Instagram? There's a lot. Um, how many women are talking about how many babies they're having, two under two, three under three, six under five, five under four, whatever it is. It's crazy. There's so many women out there having so many babies and natural births and water births and all this stuff. I couldn't have that. I had a situation where with my son's diagnosis and our struggles and my body, um, as much as I wanted things to be relatively and reasonably natural, um, it was absolutely not possible for us. We ended up having pretty much the highest medical intervention, most medicated birth possible. We had an emergency C-section due to complications and um, things did not go according to my plan. I had like a six page birth plan. Well, I don't even know if one of those items happened, like literally not one. So, um, you know, you can plan as much as you want and here's the deal, God has other plans for you. Um, and I think that was really humbling for me through, through pregnancy and what is interesting is that if you are a person of faith, God works all things for the good of those that love him. And I think we just need to remember that in the moments where you're like, this is not going according to my plan. Um, and you need to trust. And I do think pregnancy is the biggest faith test, but this is all to say that now looking back in retrospect, when hindsight's 2020, like I wouldn't change a thing and everything was fine and all those fears and those insecurities I believed and questioned didn't even like, they're, they're so minuscule now. I remember sitting on my back porch crying because they had told me that it was pretty much 100% I was going to have to have a c-section at some point. Um, little did I know that I would go in the next morning and have to have an emergency c-section because my son's oxygen and blood flow had been cut off. Um, you know, I was crying to my friend saying, I just feel like I'm not a real mom if I don't have hard labor, push through the pain, have my husband holding my hand as I birth my son into the world. Hey, the freaking Kardashians like pull their babies out like Simba style. I wanted that. I wanted that for myself selfishly. I wanted it for my baby because of immunity reasons and whatnot. But um, I felt like it also made me not a real mom. And, you know, now that that has all happened, first of all, C-sections are freaking hard. So if you have a C-section, recovering from that, I'm, I'm still not recovered, to be totally honest, with my core and my back and all that. But 
um, you know, they actually hit a, they messed up my uh, anesthetic and um, nerve block and whatnot, and my uh, my diaphragm stopped working in the C-section, so I uh, really couldn't breathe when I said I couldn't breathe, but anyways, that's all to say that all of those things ended up okay. You know what? Your baby can drink whatever it wants, whether that's breast milk for two years or it's formula from the beginning. You can birth your baby into this world however you want, and you're an awesome mom. And you can, you know, your baby can cry, you can do the cry it out method, you can do the I'm not going to let my baby cry at all method, they'll end up okay. And I think that's what we, we don't realize, like we are overthinking everything. And as women, you know, in therapy, I, I talk to my clients all the time about uh, cognitive restructuring and catastrophizing. And I think these are two things that women fall into the traps of all the time during pregnancy and postpartum. Um, you know, during the, the pregnancy period and postpartum period, the cognitive restructuring involves um, basically your, your brain overthinking something and then just overthinking and overthinking and overthinking and it gets darker and twistier if you watch Grey's Anatomy or it's like a kid on the top of a sledding hill and someone pushes them off something happens where you push off the top of the hill and then you just go all the way down the hill on that sled and that sled it just takes you darker and lower and you are in this spiral of overthinking the other thing is catastrophizing so it's like little little things that you then take and irrationally think through the whole daisy chain all the way down the dominoes to the end in the worst possible thing so you put your baby in a car seat you start driving oh my gosh i don't know if the car seat's tight enough if I have an accident, the baby will die. And he won't only die, but he'll be flung through the air and he'll hit the pavement and his head will be bleeding and all this stuff. That's catastrophizing. Is that crazy? Yeah. But I have clients who have literally thought that very thing. And, you know, for example, you put your baby to bed with a pacifier. I distinctly remember trying to research, is a pacifier less likely to reduce SIDS, more likely to reduce SIDS? Do I leave it in? What if the pacifier was made poorly? What if this one comes apart in different places? Like all those things. So don't ever think, don't catastrophize, don't, you know, cognitive restructuring really allows you and helps you to identify um, irrational and rational thoughts. It, it captures them hold, asks if they're helpful or unhelpful, and then throws out the unhelpful and the irrational. You're left with the rational, the prefrontal cortex, that cognitive processing, thinking, um, you know, mature area of your brain. So I just wanted to share this with you guys because there's a lot of things I believed as a first time mom going into becoming a mom. Here's the deal. I'm going to leave you guys with a quote that I really love. It's something I shared um, after my son was born on my Instagram. And it says, you know, I may not be able to prevent all the pain in your life, but I promise to be there so you don't have to walk it alone. I love that. You can't keep your child from being in pain. You can't prevent all the bad things that will happen to them. And Lord knows what kind of a teenager they're going to be. I was hard. <laughs> but what you can do is you can make sure that they don't have to be alone through it. You can be there. You can keep learning. You can keep trying to be the best mom you can be. But more than anything, they need a mom who's mentally sane, who's mentally joyful. Not happy, but joyful who sees purpose from little things and can appreciate the small moments, and a mom that loves them, truly loves them, selflessly, sacrificially, and a mom who acknowledges her mistakes and her weaknesses and her flaws. Your parents aren't knights in shining armor, but what they are is they're people that are trying their best to care for you each and every day. So, with this happy, sad note, I will leave you. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're a mom living in doubt, don't be doubtful. I believe in you. You can do this. Don't fall into the trap of talking yourself, you know, down these bad rabbit holes. Don't fall into the spring traps. And love your baby. I will talk to you guys later. Make sure you hit the like button, thumbs up, hit subscribe, share this video with a friend that needs it or a mom that needs encouragement. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye.